The international shipping industry carries 90% of world trade. It is the lifeblood of the global economy. There are around 50,000 merchant ships trading internationally, transporting every kind of cargo. Without shipping, intercontinental trade, the bulk transport of raw materials, and the import and export of affordable food and manufactured goods would simply not be possible. Half the world would starve, and the other half would freeze. Ships are technically sophisticated, high-value assets that can cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build. Their safe operation and reliability are crucial to the continuing health of the world economy. And as world trade grows, the international shipping industry has responded to the demand for its services. United Nations estimates show annual freight rates of more than $400 billion, which represents approximately 5% of the total global economy. It is the availability, low cost and efficiency of maritime transport that has in large part been responsible for recent dramatic improvements in global living standards. The shipping industry today is truly international, flying the flags of over 150 different nations and manned by over a million seafarers of most nationalities. It is also one of the safest, cleanest and most efficiently run industries. So how has this been achieved? It's all thanks to a global framework of regulations which govern safety and the prevention of pollution. It's vital that construction standards, navigational rules and crew qualifications are consistent among all ships in international trade. When a ship sails from Brisbane to Buenos Aires, the same rules need to apply at both ends of the voyage. The alternative would be a web of conflicting national regulations, and that would be disastrous for both safety and the efficiency of world trade. Fortunately, shipping is highly regulated at the global level by the United Nations, in particular by the London-based International Maritime Organization, or IMO. The level of ratification and enforcement of IMO conventions around the world is very high. For instance, the Safety of Life at Sea Convention, or SOLAS, and the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution by Ships, known as MARPOL, have been implemented by virtually every maritime country. But nations also have the power to detain foreign ships in port if they do not comply with the regulations a serious sanction port states are not afraid to use. As a result, although the nature of the sea means that ships are exposed to considerable physical risk, the safety record of the shipping industry and its environmental performance are impressive. Serious maritime accidents have more than halved in the last 10 years, at the same time as the amount of maritime trade has almost doubled. The quantity of oil spilled is now running at less than 10% of the level in the early 90s. And carbon dioxide emissions from cargo ships are a fraction of the equivalent figure for aircraft. There is a wide variety of merchant ships trading internationally, and they fall into a number of categories. Container ships carry most of the world's manufactured goods and products usually on scheduled liner services. The latest generation of container ships can each carry as much as 10,000 heavy trucks. Bulk carriers, the workhorses of the fleet, transport raw materials such as iron ore, coal and foodstuffs. The largest bulk carriers can carry up to 200,000 tonnes of grain. That's enough to feed half a million people for a year. Tankers transport crude oil, chemicals and petroleum products. The largest can carry over 300,000 tonnes of oil, enough to heat an entire city for a year. Other types of ship include car carriers, gas carriers, heavy lift vessels and ships supporting the offshore oil industry. There are also a large number of smaller general cargo ships. 
Ferries usually carry a mix of passengers, cars and commercial vehicles over shorter distances. And the number of luxury cruise ships has also grown greatly in recent years. Continuous improvements in technology and efficiency have made the costs of moving goods by sea very competitive. Over the last 50 years, U.S. retail prices have risen by almost 700%. During the same period, bulk shipping costs have increased by just 70%. That's why the typical cost at the pump to a consumer in the United States of transporting crude oil from the Middle East is only about half a cent per litre. And the cost of transporting a tonne of iron ore from Australia to Europe is only about $10 while shipping a can of beer costs about one cent. But over two-thirds of world shipping tonnage is associated with the energy and metal industries. The health of the shipping industry is heavily dependent on them. Moreover, shipping markets are cyclical and notoriously volatile, and one of the main tasks of ship owners is to manage these huge financial risks. As we've seen, shipping is amongst the safest and most environmentally friendly forms of commercial transport. It was amongst the very first industries to adopt international safety standards, which have been widely implemented through the International Maritime Organization. In recent years, the world has seen a major shift towards industrial production in Asia. This has in turn brought about a significant improvement in global standards of living. It is only the international shipping industry and the low cost and the efficiency of moving goods by sea that has made this possible. Shipping is indeed the lifeblood of the global economy. This short film has been made by the International Chamber of Shipping, which represents the global industry at bodies such as IMO. ICS members are national ship owners associations who together represent more than two-thirds of the world merchant fleet. To find out more, visit www.shippingfacts.com.